officials Monday night. Three separate crews for the first time at the Final Four. Each three-man crew will work one game. Good John deal. Williams stepped in and stole the ball from Thompson, and LSU comes to the attack. That's good hustle play by John Williams, because the attack was obviously all elegant. John Redmond has shot so well so far in the tournament. He the first shot. He was short, but he gets his own rebound. Off the break, through the foul, score the field goal. Very unusual for a Louisville team not to block out a shooter, and that's what happened. Cook did not block Redden out. And now Redden goes back inside. Good pump fake. Gets Ellison up in the air, follows through. Redden is extremely strong inside. Basket counts. LSU off to a great start. Obviously, Louisville's going to play man-to-man. -man. That's basically what they do, but Redden did a good job going outside early. Louisville's first offensive threat, Jeff Hall. Hall recognized the 2-3 zone, found himself a spot on the wing, and now here comes that famous Louisville 2-2-1 full-court press. John, John Williams. Williams, an excellent ball handler, and a sloppy pass by Williams. Thompson, however, turned it over, double dribble, and he traveled also. Very lackadaisical on the part of John Williams to throw that ball. He has to realize that Louisville has a great press, has that ability in the back line with their quickness to pick off a pass like that. Billy Thompson on John Williams. Clear out for Taylor. Taylor, get it for the glass. They cleared out Jeff Hall. He got no help. Ranton in the middle. There he is. Got his hand on it. Forced the turnover. Redden lead pass Williams. They won't stop him on the break. Does Dale have him believing, or does he have him believing? He may have me believing in a moment. That Blanton has great anticipation in this matchup zone defense. You notice Louisville has nobody in the middle right now. Now Thompson goes in the area. He picks up. That's going to be very difficult. The lob pass to Ellison because of the size advantage. You know that Dale Brown's worried about that lob pass going right over his smaller people. Excellent view of the defense. LSU quickly gets it up against the pressure. Williams got the bounce. So Excellent touch. So soft. Up-tempo pace so far. We expected LSU to slow it down and play more of a half-court game. They have come out running. They're making the most of the opportunities. Taylor. Great shooter from right out front. Now Dale Brown changing those defenses. Team stays in what looks like a 2-3 zone. One thing they do have, Brent, they have Louisville thinking about those changing defenses because they slowed down. Crook trying to hang in the air, and Thompson follows up for Denny Brown. Superior size on Blanton in the middle. Billy LSU missed that first shot, and now they've hit five in a row. Taylor under pressure. All and coming up with it was Wagner. Crook almost lost it, saved it. Wagner does lose it as he comes through, but because Wilson fouled him. You can see Louisville wants to run. Now, Louisville is a very versatile club. They can get in a running game, they can play a passive game. Dale Brown has been to the Final Four once before. That was in 1981. Bob Knight in Indiana beat him in the semifinal. He had Bob Knight in trouble in that semifinal game. Ethan Martin was doing the job on Isaiah Thomas. Bobby took Isaiah out of the game, and Ethan sat down, and Indiana was able to do it without uh, Isaiah. That was the last year of the consolation game, too, Brent, and Virginia beat LSU in the consolation game. We have that no more. 11 to 8, LSU leading 17-19 left, first half here in Dallas. And Wilson, important shot, Wilson's got a hit. Blanton with an offensive rebound. Now ordinarily a fan might say he should have been blocked off. Remember this about Louisville, Denny Crum teaches his rebounders to turn and go to the glass, not to think block out, but to go get the ball. Shot is missed. Billy Thompson come up over, couldn't get it. The ball is out of bounds. It'll be Louisville. Blanton still doing a fine job inside, even though he didn't get all of that ball. You just feel that before the game is over, he's got the wear down and get himself in foul trouble, giving away that much size. Louisville has taken only four shots. And LSU 
LSU nine in the early going. Here's that two three matchup zone again. Into Ellison. Thompson. Great rebound. Great rebound by Billy Thompson. This has been his NCAA tournament. He's really been awesome. And Blanton's first foul. Thompson averaging 18, almost 19 points a game in the tournament. That's a great rebound. Puts it right back up, and you can see where Blanton's going to have some problems inside. These fellows are too big for him. Billy Thompson has gone from one of the most overrated freshmen to one of the most underrated seniors. If I was an NBA team, I'd keep my eye on him. He can do a lot of things on the floor, some of which are not appreciated. He was 14 for 14 from the foul line in this NCAA tournament before missing the other day in the fi regional finals. John Williams got pretty good position on him. Nate Williams, he looked to take Billy Thompson. He gets the ball in that area. Redden with sensational range. Maneuvering, has to arch it high and gets it to fall. Ellison loses it. Wagner regains it. Thompson again with a quick pass to Ellison. Oh, he's a great, great defensive play by Williams. Gets into the middle. Goes all the way. Oh, yeah. And didn't get the ball. He really can put that ball back behind his head and get that shot off. Amazing. Thompson in low. John Williams in the air. And that created the foul opportunity. If you take a careful look at Billy Thompson's eyes as we watch John Williams, you'll see that he has a purpose here in this particular tournament. We saw it at the regional final, and here today, Billy, he has pulled away some key rebounds. He draws the first personal on Williams. Now, Billy, he's listed 6'7". He plays a lot bigger than this. Got long arms, huge hands. Very strong. In a game like this, you need senior leadership. It's also nice to have a big man like John Williams that can come back and help you bring the ball up against that press because he can throw over some of that front line defense. Redden is two of three. Williams two of three. Redden wants his fourth shot. An entirely different offensive style than what we expected out of LSU so far. Paul. Ellison. Off Blanton. Louisville's ball. Looked like Ellison had that one last. Louisville seems to be much fresher out there, don't they, Brent? LSU is really tiring quickly. And, uh, and Mark McSwain checking in for Denny Crumbilly. McSwain was a starter at times last year. Crook coming out. McSwain having a real good NCAA tournament. I think this pace, as you pointed out, Brent, is a lot quicker than LSU anticipated. Wagner knocks it down. Notice the press is kind of passive. Wagner got a hand on it. That was Williams, great ball handling. Well, it was a great play, but that's carrying the ball. <laughs> uh, that's even I, can, I can score against Louisville <laughs> if I'm allowed to pawn it like that. We, have a, we get that play over again. I'll pull it out. Paul scored the field goal. Everybody's been going after some elbows out here. That time the riff officials were right on it. So four of LSU starters have a foul apiece. Only Derek Taylor is without a personal foul. Dale starting to work a little bit on the officials. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. 1917 LSU with the lead. Billy, let's show the hands of the master. Dale Brown with his changing defenses that you referred to. These are the different switches that he will signal for the sideline as he comes down on defense. And uh, Packer, what is the freak? Well, as this game goes on, here's something <laughs> I ripped out of an old basketball <laughs> journal where, where Dale explained it in the journal. And you know what? They, they sent back in letters to the editor. Dale, what are you talking about here? So he's showing them in person hey, now. Wait a minute now, Billy. Tell me, what is he talking about? What is the freak? It's, it's working. A multiple changing defenses. And I... As he said, it's too complicated to explain. And there's oh, Wagner right there. explaining what you need. That's <laughs> right. Just put it in the hole. That'll freak you out a little bit, won't it? Taylor comes back to the attack. Blanton is 
33, and here's Redden, 44. Louisville changed up a little press. And they left Blanton alone as he moved inside. Here comes LSU for the first time, straight man-to-man -man defense. Blanton is a little small for Ellison. Wilson can get on track. LSU really could use him from the outside. William Watson in behind the defense, but it hit the rim. It goes right into the hands of Red. He's everywhere. He has gotten so many loose balls in this NCAA tournament so far. Redden also was a fellow recruited as a guard. Had four guards and a forward out there, right. in effect. Boy, Ellison had good position. Good job by Red to beat him over there. Now they're back to the matchup 2-3. Billy, you made the point that LSU was going to have to stay close in this game, and they certainly are. Missed by Wagner, yanked off by Williams. Taylor rather shoot out front. He really has a hard time from the wing. Wagner, Thompson, knocked out of bounds, Cardinals ball. How about those hands by John Williams, able to sneak in there to bat that ball away. I think Louisville's a little surprised at how well this LSU team is playing. Could they have come in here just a touch overconfident against this group? I, I really don't think they're overconfident. I think both of these teams are a little shocked at the pace of this game. Nabosha Bukomerovic out of Yugoslavia has checked into the game for Dale Vaughn and Tony Kimbrough. With Jeff Hall sitting down for Coach Crump. Excuse me, Billy, I might have interrupted your point there with that substitute. Now, I think both of these clubs are probably a little shocked at the pace of this game. Both a little tired here early. They'll get their second win quickly. Short. Not a good idea by Kimbrough to come right off the bench cold, put up a tough jumper. That time they call him for too many dribbles. Here goes John Williams off to the races, looking for an opening, and then he turns it over. Ball came up a little quick. Billy, I think Williams is being forced to handle the ball too much. I think yep. they're going to need him down inside to score. Would you agree with that? It's hard to ask a man to bring it up and then also be in a position in the low post. He's very talented. Thompson rising up with that jump shot. Billy Thompson showing some range. A look at the pressure. They don't necessarily steal the ball on you, but when you're playing against five or six men, as LSU likes to use, they can wear you down. Quick pass by. Good pass to Williams. Comes back with those quick hands. Boy, John Williams' hands are so good. He, he's got great power, and yet he has the soft hands. That's a very unusual combination. How would you rate him right now as far as creating plays with all the other great players like Thompson in the country? As Thompson makes the pass, swatted away, and the foul called on Redden. How would you rate John Williams, Billy? I, I think that John Williams rates up a, among the top ten players in the country. He was the MVP in the National Sports Festival last year, recruited as the top freshman in the country, was a co-freshman of the year with Cedric Henderson in the SEC last year, all-conference this year, unanimous choice, certainly to be one of the best players in the country next year and years to come. Seven points already for the senior guard, Milt Wagner, who missed all of last year because of that broken foot. He has also dished out four assists. So along with Thompson, Wagner also wants to close out with a national championship. Interesting, the Camden connection there. Camden High School rated the number one high school team in America this year. They're putting out quite a talent, but they can have three on this club and still be loaded. Williams pushes Kimbrough off. Then he come off the bench. You don't see that often. Kind of calm. Redden. Great patience on Redden's part. Blanton can't get control. Wagner for Louisville. Cardinals can take the lead on this trip. That's a charge. That's a charge. No question about it. Big turnover by, by Billy, but by Milt Wagner. Brent, on that play, three LSU players failed to cross half court. They're getting really tired out there. The Louisville bench is starting to work on them. The littlest man, Derek Taylor, took that charge and drew the first foul on Wagner. We see already, just as you mentioned them being tired, that Oliver Brown has checked into the game, number 31 for Dale Brown. He's handling the ball right now. He's been coming across the timeline. He's a good defensive player, not much.
much of a shooter, that means Anthony Wilson's going to have to start putting something up. 11-24, first half. Anthony Wilson not looking for his shot so far. shots. 
So that puts a lot of pressure on John Williams to be the man to get the points. We've got Vargas out there. Not much of an offensive threat, although his biggest game of his career was the first one he ever played, scoring over 22 points. Williams turns inside Thompson and has it swatted away by McSwain. A lot of loose balls are winding up in the hands of the Tigers. Sign of hustle. Here comes John Williams beating McSwain to the ball. Puts it on the floor of as he goes in. And a foul is on Cook, score the field goal. John Williams is so clever with that ball. You know, I, I think people think he's slow, and, and they try to go ahead and relax, and then he just blows by him. He's extremely patient, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. He reminds me so much of George McGinnis, the great player from Indiana, of course, had the super pro career. I'll tell you who else could make a one-headed move like that and follow it up was Elgin Baylor. He was a horse right. after he'd miss. He, of course, played his college basketball out of Seattle. Seattle was in the Final Four. Got a pair of shoulders on him, doesn't he? Had chicken pox, missed one game this year. Into the hands of Wagner. Louisville can tie it at 33. We have 7.08 to go, first half. This is our first national semifinal for the reunion. Cook is open, left-handed. That'll be contending. Game is tied at 33 at the seven-minute mark. Brent, there was a case in the changing defenses where actually everybody wasn't in sync for LSU. And you had two play not playing the same defense that the other three were playing. Now they won't.
keep those easy baskets away from Louisville. That inside defense is doing what it's supposed to. Well, he's stuck with Odea. The other side missed the shot inside. McSwain trying to get it out of there, and Dale complaining that traveling should have been called as Cook hits the field goal. That 12 to 15 foot range for Herbert Cook is like automatic when he gets it in that low post. Well, I guess we should be surprised when you consider who they beat to get here. You know, Purdue, Memphis State, Georgia Tech, Kentucky. Look at Blanton come up with that loose ball. And a foul is going to be called against Louisville. Ellison did get the ball, but he hit with the body. That's going to be two on Purvis Ellison. Again, look at Blanton going to that ball. Picks up every loose ball in sight. And there's Ellison batting it away. If anything, it was a touch foul. Well, I thought Bill Wagner came through there and rejected the ball, and Ellison must have caught him with the body on the inside because there were about three white jerseys underneath the basket. Thompson returning for Coach Crumb, but Swain will sit down at the 4-13 mark. I'm not necessarily surprised that LSU's ahead, but I'm surprised at the tempo of the game so far. They have not been running as much time off that 45-second shot clock as I thought sure they would and keep this a half-court game. But one thing about Louisville when I've watched them this year, Billy, I've sometimes felt that their defense was more up-tempo than their offense. Oh, I would agree with that. It has been throughout uh, Denny Crumb's career. I think that he always plays a very patient offense, puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Timeout. Called by the officials, so we'll take a break as you take a view of the skyline of Dallas, Texas. From the blimp, we'll be right back. Think about your life, where you've been, and where you're going. To the new vice president. Today you need more than life insurance. You need a financial plan to take you where you want to go. We're Mass Mutual, and we insure more than lives. We insure success. In Alamance County, North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Beginning with the Honda overhead valve engine, each precision part is fitted and assembled to exacting tolerances. Then, the final critical step that determines whether a machine will meet the Honda standard. The Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. The Honda lawnmower. It's easy to start, or else... Well, Billy, what about the game tempo so far? Well, Brent, you had a very good feel for the game, in my opinion, because when you look there, under 25 seconds, LSU and Louisville both putting up the ball quickly. Nobody holding the ball to speak of over 25 seconds. And uh, so I, I'd say it's a very up tempo ball game. Uh, surprising for Louisville not to be a little bit more patient with their shot selection. Well, Dale Brown has his men believing things can happen in sports when you believe first of all in yourself. You can just ask Villanova. Wagner off the penetration. Misses the one-hander loose. Ollie Brown. But LSU getting every loose ball. Every team rebound is theirs. They're just beating Louisville to the spot. Williams gives it back to Taylor. Good ball fake that time by Williams. This time they'll bring it under 25 seconds. Bad pass. But they get no, it for the loose ball and come up with it again. Now Williams. Oh, behind his back through the leg. Another loose ball. Coming up with the shot. Didn't get the roll. And a very aggressive rebound by Purvis Ellison, who gets it into the hands of Wagner at the 320 mark in the first half. You realize that the Louisville guards have not scored in three and a half minutes. Foul is going against LSU, and that's John Williams down inside, and that's his second personal foul for Dale Brown. That's about as long a time as I can remember Denny's guards going, since we've been covering them, eight minutes without a score. Well, Milt Wagner threw that one ball away, and I think it, he lost a little bit of concentration when he threw that long lob to Thompson that went out of bounds, and Denny Crum had to sit in a while. He's not yet back into the flow of the game. Billy, do you think that any of this defensive juggling that Dale Brown likes to talk about has upset?
set the rhythm of the Louisville offense? I really don't think the defense has been the cause. I don't think Louisville's gotten in their set pattern very well so far. Another nice substitution by Dale Brown. He's wanting to keep everybody rested as long as he can keep this tight. Jose Vargas returning. Again, you have to wonder when LSU has this lineup out there, where do they get the points? Ball is lost out of bounds, and for a moment, the official thought about pointing in the other direction. Dale Brown uh, forcing him onward over there. Thompson lost it, but got it back. Quick pass deflected by Wilson. You see, not only do they get loose balls, but passes like that, they're knocking out of the way. Out of bounds, a very quick hand. That was a good play by Wilson, because Purvis Ellison was wide open on the weak side for an easy stuff. Little shooting for a tie. Again, Milt Wagner throwing that lob. Doesn't even make any sense. Denny Crump really upset with Milt on that pass. You want to be real sure in a tight game like this when you have that lob. So tempting against a team of six foot, six inch men, but you got to make it good if Brown comes in and he is fouled by Thompson. Brown, not a real good shooter. On the year, only shooting 47% from the foul line. Doesn't look to score much except on garbage baskets. Then he again giving Milt Wagner an air pull and watching his. Denny's lovely wife, Joyce. Beautiful I spoke lady. to Coach Crum yesterday, and I said, Denny, when you went out the last time to be interviewed for the UCLA job, did you think about taking it? And he said, when I left their offices, I was sure in my mind that I was going to move back to the West Coast and become the Bruins head coach. He said, I returned to Louisville, I drove for the airport, and I realized how great the lifestyle was in Louisville, how much that whole community liked basketball, and what a great job I already had. He said, my lifestyle would have changed dramatically if I had moved back to Los Angeles. So Denny Crum is very secure, comfortable, and happy, and he said, I have no interest in the NBA or anything else. I'm the Louisville basketball coach, and I will stay there. You're talking about history. What would history be like had he succeeded John Wood immediately? Then he would have taken the job. I that guarantee first time. He and That's the biggest mistake that that school ever made as far as the basketball program is concerned. Well, that's not bad. Shoots over his uh, average. Does Brown hit one for two?
first to seven, it'll be the largest. Well, this LSU team statistically has been amazing, the NCAA tournament also. They're being outshot from the floor by their opponents. Actually, they just have a very slight rebound edge, three-tenths of a, of a point. So for them to win four games on that base is amazing. They're doing it with hustle. Thompson. Vargas with a hand. Blanton fouls for it and comes up with another loose ball. LSU inside of a minute ten. Closing out the first half. They'll go to the locker room with the lead here over Louisville. They came into the game a five-point underdog. I think they'd be smart to use a little clock here, Brent, because they do not have a good offensive team on the floor. Dale Brown wanting to keep John Williams on that bench. Wilson. He's a street shooter. The shot clock is off. Denny Crum said he just wants one shot. Dale Brown says move the zone defense back. And then he'll want it to be very active as it gets down inside 10 seconds. sports sedans before there was such a term as sports sedan. Experience pays. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class. The heart of a sports sedan. The soul of a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class. Something more than a sports sedan. Nothing less than a Mercedes-Benz.
Private Players Championship continues tomorrow live on CBS Sports. A familiar face in the crowd, Walter Barrett of St. John's, who is watching the action. He was down here to accept one of his many awards, voted the CBS Chevrolet Player of the Year. You'll see that presentation a little bit later. And he's watching another outstanding player here. In fact, several. But he has to be impressed so far with John Williams, who has tried to maneuver inside, but who is cut off by Crook. And so Redden comes up with a shot and he's short. Thompson out, and Louisville can string together three field goals to start the second half. Important basket here. So quickly, Brook reaching in, and Thompson also there under the basket, and the foul will be on Thompson, his second. You've got a good run going in Louisville, coming back this quickly. You want to make sure that's a real good shot with an opportunity to rebound. Dale Brown bordering right up on that coach coaching box. Louisville probably will tighten up some of the pressure a little bit in the backcourt. Redden only got in uh, eight minutes in that first half, but still had good offensive production. Paul reaching around Taylor commits his first personal foul. And here's Hall. This is kind of careless defense. Let a man go right by him, didn't square up at all, and then reached behind and got the foul. LSU's been able to get penetration. I pointed this out at the top of the game, off the dribble just about any time they want it. And that creates the two-on-one situations on the inside. Redden. Set play. Thompson. Loses it. Taylor. Williams. Three on two. Wilson. Two, three in the trap. Coming up for LSU. Again, to watch how Louisville has not put a man on the top of the key. The foul line area. There's Crook coming across there. There's where the open spot is against that defense, Trent. Because Blanton then has to come up to play somebody. And Crook is a good player there. Ellison is. And so is Thompson. Wilson. And the lead again is six. He's the man that has this team here when he hit that shot to beat Memphis State. Big game against Purdue. And then went in a little bit of a drought. He's back hitting today. Here's that defense. Nobody in the center. And that's where it's open. They go to trap Thompson. He gets it into Ellison's hands. Brooke. Left hand. Blanton taps it to Williams. Red behind his back traveled before he released the pass. Not a bad idea, though. You can see how loose they are. Even though Red walked, it was a pretty good thing not to get tight. Back to the man. And that's just a change one time. They won't stay in man-to-man -man against Louisville. Louisville recognizes in a hurry. Wagner, short. Ellison. All moves it to Crook. On the turnaround. Oh, Ellison was holding by it. Ellison had one hand on Blanton, used it to pogo stick right over the top of him. Stepped out of bounds. They called in for walking on the other end. One of the things, Trent, that a lot of people think that we'll see the play right here. Good angle. Here comes Purvis Ellison. You see him step right on the line. And one of the things a lot of people expect LSU to get patient here to the point that they lose their momentum. But it looks like they're willing to go out and put it right back up. Wilson and Lowe has it rejected by Ellison, but comes back with a second shot. Redden on a tap, Blanton will run it down in the corner. Well, loose balls still become the property of LSU. Redden. They leave him alone, and he'll nail every shot from that spot. Denny Crumb really has to be upset. His club's just being out hustled. That doesn't happen often. Paul. 16 minutes to go in regulation. Denny Crum a lot more, showing a lot more emotion than normal now, getting up off of that bench. Taylor. The Tigers are loose, aren't they, right? <laughs> they are really loose. Wagner. Rammed in by Thompson. There are a lot of athletes in Memphis, down Georgia Tech way, and in Lexington, where Kentucky is, who are not surprised. They felt the sting of the Tigers already in this tournament. Purdue, of course.
dropped off. Redden had a man all over him that time. And Louisville's on an 8-2 run in the last three minutes. Thompson makes it 10-2. And the Cardinals are ahead. They have come back from an eight-point halftime deficit to their first lead in this semifinal game over LSU with 12.40 to go. I think John Williams is going to have to get back in this game. LSU needs this offense. Billy Thompson again. Walls. Smart play. Ellison breaking, but not coming up quite high enough to get the ball. He's buried down behind those defenders on the baseline. Wagner. Up his 
hard as they are. Nice job by Kevin Walls. He's getting his team in his half-court offense. And LSU's having a hard time getting in there. Swain over the back. Substitution pattern has been a lot different in the NCAA 
tournament than it was during the regular season. He was substituting very deep, letting that bench put in a lot of minutes and scoring a lot of points. He's been substituting basically by individuals in the tournament. But he still has now a very rested ball club on the floor, his normal starting team.
Crook and Ellison. So that's the five men because Denny Crum wants to talk to, to Billy about something which he's doing right now on the sideline. Oh, some shot by Crook. Now, Dale Brown's doing the only thing he can do. He's got to get out of that zone a little bit, put a little more pressure, try to turn the ball over. When you do that, you try to go man to man, but they don't match up very well man to man against Louisville. And Dale Brown wisely takes a timeout. He's got to come up with some way to turn that ball over.
some peace of mind. Dale Brown not ready to give up yet. Here comes the press. Nobody's going to run away from this passer this time for Louisville. Then he made that point over in the huddle. There comes Hall right to it. Gets it to Wagner. Ellison short with the shot. Why is he shooting the ball? Get it out. That's what Denny Grubb's Denny saying, too. Throw it out. They have no reason to put up a tough shot as Ellison did, but that's a freshman. Foul on Wilson. The under pressure experience or the lack of experience will always tell. And in the case of Ellison, although he has a lot of savvy, that was a time he just don't take a chance of missing the shot. But he said, heck, I've been knocking that shot down all yeah. year long. Why now any different? The well, the key for Louisville, they don't need any more points. What they need are to get rid of the clock. Center stage, the rest of the way. 